Watchdog groups say some educators are getting around state laws that ban teaching the fundamentals of critical race theory and other controversial curriculum. This, of course, as parents become more emboldened to stand up and call out school boards that go against parents who question what's happening in America's classrooms. Joining us right now, Erica Sanzi, Director of Outreach for Parents Defending Education. Erica, great to see you as always. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for having me. This new law in Florida we keep talking about, it's called the Parental Rights in Education, clearly outlining what can be taught specifically to kids in K through third grade. First, let's talk about why this law was put into place and also the teachers who have said they don't care. They believe it's their right to teach kids whatever they think is important. Yeah, so unfortunately, it seems as though all of the nuance about this law has been lost in the conversation. The, the K through three part of this law is about classroom instruction. It is not about answering a question from a student or having a conversation. It's about instructing students in um, on the subjects of gender identity or gender ideology and also sexual orientation and sexual identity. Where I do think the critics make a point is that there is some vagueness in the language when they talk about age appropriate for the remaining grades. And so I, I think that there is a conversation to be had there. Um, the second part of your question was about teachers talking about ignoring this law, right? Correct. So yeah, we are definitely seeing, um, again, what, what it see, appears to me is that the messaging on this law has been so dishonest and egregiously inaccurate and that's what a lot of the people are believing to be true. They haven't actually read the bill. So what we see are some teachers, again, I am positive this is a small percentage that are taking to TikTok and, and saying that they're going to ignore the law. But it is still concerning because they certainly do feel emboldened. And it seems to me, again, they have a fundamental misunderstanding of the law and they have a fundamental misunderstanding of their obligations and responsibilities as public employees. They're employees of the state. So they don't get to just say whatever they want and do whatever they want. They are hired speech. And speaking of which, they are hired through our taxpayer dollars, which the parents employ them through that. But this is very interesting that you say this is a small percentage because all it takes is a small percentage, as we know, to change minds and to change laws because issues like this are happening all over the U.S. In Pennsylvania, five school board members were just reinstated after a judge ruled that the board members in Chester County School District had to be removed after they voted in favor of mask mandates, even after the Pennsylvania Supreme Court ruled those mandates were unconstitutional. It was one parent who created this petition leading to this court case. Let's take a look at what that particular parent said. She said, once the Supreme Court declared that was unconstitutional, we implored our school board, we asked and asked and begged and pleaded and made comments to lift the mask mandate, and they refused. When they refused, that is when we made the decision to file the petition. And, and as we have talked about, Erica, situations like this can truly show the difference that one parent can make on the grassroots level to implement changes in their schools. All it takes is one. Can you talk about the importance of that? I've been saying for a long time, years actually, that, that a group of parents that is well-informed makes for a formidable army. And I think that that's what we're seeing. This is not just parents screaming and yelling about um, issues about which they have no information and no knowledge. What we have seen are parents who have taken a lot of time and dedicated you know, a ton of energy to understanding what is going on. In the case of COVID, they were looking at studies, they were comparing with other countries, they were seeing what other countries were doing, and they came to the conclusion, a conclusion I happen to agree with, that the masks in schools were not only not doing what experts were saying they were doing, right? So they weren't stopping spread. And on the flip side, the cost, you know, the damage being done to children so far outweighed any potential benefit from the masks. So I salute all of these parents and they wouldn't be having to you know, stand up by themselves and then try to rally other parents to come and spend so much of their time doing this work of becoming informed if the people in positions of power in our public health system had been telling the truth in the beginning. And my sense is that, again, parents are fighting because nobody else has been willing to do that for their children. 
Right, and this can cut both ways, obviously, on both sides of the issues. There are reports, though, that lessons relating to CRT are actually being rebranded in schools so teachers can still teach the curriculum they think they should be teaching despite parents' objections. And one example is in Idaho. Idaho did ban critical race theory. One school official, though, explained in this undercover video, quote, we're just learning how to worm around all of those weird things that are out there. So even with laws in place, you got school teachers and administrators who aren't actively changing the curriculum. They're actually looking for ways to just get around the law. So then what's the consequence? Yeah, one thing I don't think people understand is that it's teachers do what teachers do. And oftentimes, like there is no real way to know exactly what's happening. They close the door and they could be following the curriculum, the approved curriculum, or they may not be. One of the reasons that I'm a little skeptical about the efficacy of these bills is exactly what you describe, right? Like, what is the enforcement mechanism? And so I remain convinced that the best uh, way to snuff out bad ideas is with better ideas. So uh, a few things. One, parents have a right to transparency. The whole public does, actually. And, and so certainly we should be looking to pass, you know, transparency legislation so that at the very least, the curriculum that is approved is accessible to parents and other taxpayers and concerned citizens. But the truth is, is that the approved curriculum is often not what's actually you know, being used in the classroom. I look at curriculum or I look at lessons and activities around the country all, you know, all day. That's what I do for a living. And many of them are way off course. So again, the goal has got to be finding ways to beat back these terrible ideas and these you know toxic ideologies and completely age inappropriate lessons um with better arguments and even with offering alternatives so that parents don't always feel like they're against something but they can actually bring something to the table and say hey i i understand that perhaps this is something that needs to be discussed here's a much much better way to do it all right erica sanzi we appreciate you joining us this morning hope you have a great week you too, thank you so much.